While this is the first case that GameDS has sent me, it's not the first one I've encountered. I used their Talos E1 mini tower for a build I completed last year, and if my first experience with a GameDS case is anything to go off of, I was definitely not optimistic when they reached out to me to take a look at this one. However, I actually found a number of reasons why their larger Argus M1 could be a legitimate alternative to some of the long-standing mid-tower competition. The GameDS Argus M1 is an RGB-infused tempered glass mid-tower that retails for about $80. Now, I realize that description matches most PC cases in 2020, but I'm going to tell you why you should care about this one in particular. And if you're interested in picking one up by the end of this review, or purchasing anything else we mentioned in this review, then please use our affiliate links to do so. I've expressed my distaste for some design decisions by GameDS in the past, but the Argus M1 is surprisingly restrained. That being said, it does borrow some styling cues from other players on the market. The front intake should seem especially familiar if you've seen a case by Fractal Design in the last five years. Now in their defense, when you design a mid-tower case with these specs and features and at this price point, you're gonna end up making a case that all look pretty similar. The vibrant RGB strip and illuminated RGB IO ports are really the only source of character in the whole case, but I actually prefer a more minimalistic approach when it comes to case design. If you think of your PC as a work of art, the case should really just be the frame. Yes, it should look nice and match the aesthetic of the interior, but it shouldn't detract from the masterpiece you've created within those walls. The Argus M1 fits that description almost perfectly. The only visual complaint I have is the large branding in front. GameDS is not a household name, so branding the front of the computer means nothing to anyone other than the person who built it. Besides that, most mainstream competitors are doing away with branding to simplify the design language anyway. As of writing, it only comes in black, but I think the same case with a shade of white would look really clean. The RGB IO and RGB strip have their own buttons to control their effects. The strip can also be synced to RGB interfaces used by popular vendors. The only other distinguishing visual features are the tempered glass panels. Now, not all glass side panels are created or implemented equally. But this one happens to be a surprisingly good example. The generously tinted glass has a black border that conceals the case frame and rests on four rubberized standoffs. This makes installing the glass panel much easier. Now there's also another panel at the front of the case, but you can't see through it, making me wonder why it's even there to begin with. There are thumb screws at the rear of the case which hold the back panel and expansion cards in place, but they are not captive. Removing the back panel revealed familiar markings that I did not expect to see. It appears GameDS has graciously imprinted our channel logo on the inside of the back panel and on the power supply shroud of the review sample they sent us. This was a first for me and I wasn't entirely sure what to make of it. I'd like to think this was simply done as a token of gratitude. If it was done in an effort to curry favor with me, I'd be lying if I said it didn't work a little. Moving things inside, however, you'll find where GameBS made most of their cost-cutting decisions. The interior isn't bad, but it doesn't appear to match the quality of the elegant exterior. There are no rubberized grommets to keep your cables concealed, the PCIe slots are not replaceable, and I did not find a front intake filter. This was the most concerning and puzzling omission of the whole experience. The top of the case and power supply shroud both got their own filters, but the front just got the shaft, despite being arguably the most essential filter for preventing dust buildup. As I said, it wasn't all bad news inside the case. The toolless drive caddies are convenient, the cable cutouts were plentiful and well-placed, and a window on the full-length PSU shroud lets you flex your 80 plus rating. If it's all standard motherboard layouts up to and including, surprisingly, E-ATX motherboards, it comes pre-populated with a single 120mm fan at the rear with room for dual 120s or 140s up top and two 140s or three 120s up front. And that of course amounts to a 280 or 360 radiator at the front or a single 120 at the rear. With 168 millimeters of air cooler clearance, there's only a handful of coolers out there that couldn't call this case home. You shouldn't have to worry about your graphics card either, since the Argus M1 can accommodate cards up to 350 millimeters long. Drive compatibility is also generous with room for two two and a half inch drives and two three and a half inch drives. Building in the Argus M1 was uneventful, and that's really all you can ask for out of a good case. We did use a micro ATX board, which undoubtedly gave us a little extra room to work with. There was adequate space for cable management behind the motherboard tray, but a few more tie down locations would have been appreciated. 
As long as you're not using any custom cable extensions, you should be just fine. In addition to a single 120mm fan pre-installed at the rear, we placed two more fans up front, and in this configuration we witnessed no thermal throttling of our Ryzen 3600 at stock speeds. The GPU likewise maintained temperatures that were well within thermal limits. Sound performance was average for a case this size, and it sits at about 41 decibels at rest, raising just 4 decibels to 45 under load. Now keep in mind these measurements were taken right next to the front intake. On paper, the Gamedius Argus M1 looks like your garden variety mid-tower case, and at $80, it's positioned right alongside some formidable competition from NZXT, Fantex, Fractal, and Corsair. However, none of those brands have an eATX compatible offering anywhere close to this price point. Now, admittedly, an eATX board would be a really tight fit, but it would be possible. If you don't need that extended motherboard space, the Argus M1 is still an excellent choice, it's just not the only one. Well, thanks for tuning in. If you appreciated this review and you'd like to see more, subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And if you'd like to enter our giveaways, grab a TechFox shirt, or buy from our affiliate links, you can do so right underneath that like button. And if you like this video and you want to see more, then check out these other videos over here. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.